I can't tell you about how we work, but basically we follow criminals without them knowing. It's as simple as that. You won't know we're there. If we're doing our job properly, you won't even see us. You won't see us in your mirrors when you're driving. You won't see us when you're out on foot, walking around town. You won't see us when you're having a drink in a pub, but we will be all over you. The basic principle that we adhere to is don't get caught. Stand by, stand by, stand by. The subject is out, 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 the subject vehicle. Just up down, just up down. Positive identification of subject, Birch, in company with a further blonde female. What she's describing as trafficking then, yeah, OK. 4-1 has the eyeball towards a black BMW. It might be that her circumstances in Brazil are worse. That doesn't mean she's not being exploited. Do you want to stop doing what you're doing? Of course. The thing that makes a criminal good at being a criminal is they don't get caught. He moves around the world, he lives an expensive lifestyle. The bank account has turned over 1.2 million. I know what's happening, but how do I turn that into evidence? This is an international trade in human misery. Dear Sir and Madam, I'm writing to you with some information about two men who are running an escort business in Cheltenham. Their names are Mark Viner and Leslie Davis. bringing the Brazilian girls into the country, all working here illegal, and they have businesses that they use to launder money. They have safe houses, but I don't know where. Hopefully you'll see that all this information is no joke, and there are photos, sims, and documents of Mark and Leslie. Someone wants us to know something, and they want us to do something about it. Second of January, he goes out to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Less than a day, leaves at eight in the morning, back by 10 in the evening, traveling with a female. This is interesting because it's right. uh, exactly yeah. what we might expect to see if he is involved in trafficking these ladies across the world. I would assume she could well be a Brazilian. It's quite promising. Yes. Yeah, it is. Human trafficking is actually quite a straightforward crime. You move someone from A to B and you exploit them at the end. 
that this one person who's been exploited in a town in Gloucestershire actually fits in with an international trade in human misery, making billions and billions and billions of pounds. What does a criminal actually look like? The people we're looking at here, you wouldn't look at them in the street and think, oh, they're members of an OCG. Um, they're traffickers. But the intelligence we've got on Mark Viner definitely points to him being an organised criminal. He moves around the world, he lives an expensive lifestyle. He's got hardly any legitimate income, a couple of thousand pounds pension a year. Of course, one of the difficulties is you can get all this really good intelligence, but it's not evidence, it's not admissible in a court. But we've got tactics that aren't available to most police forces. started off with an anonymous package through the door of the police station in Sirencester in the middle of the night, so we don't know who left it. And uh, essentially what it's saying is that Mark Viner and uh, Leslie Davis run an escort business, have done so for six or seven years. Mm -hmm. They're putting the women onto this website called Adult Works, uh, where people advertise services. And he makes about three to four thousand pound cash a week. This is the flat here. The information is that Viner lives at number 24. Davis lives at number 22. And the women that they employ work at at number 23 in the middle. So all three of the top floor penthouse flats uh, are sort of part of the operation, essentially. The women are generally sourced from Brazil. And Mark Viner lived there, um, certainly up until 2010. Uh, there are intelligence reports of workers within that block. April 2017, officers attended, report of, uh, of a domestic from residence. Um, eventually, after a lot of banging on the doors, Mark Viner opened the door of number 23. Um, and he had scratches on his face. The lady inside the flat was a young Brazilian lady. She was quite open, saying that she was a prostitute. There was lots of other girls. She was 24 years old. She uh, typed into Google Translate on the phone that she was scared and she wanted to go back to Brazil. And the other interesting thing is, is his travel. He made a trip to Amsterdam on the 2nd. When he came back, he was with a Brazilian national. And she would be the right demographic. She would match the other people that he's right. had working for him. You are building a compelling case. And there's no doubt about it from what you've, what you've articulated this morning. It is a compelling case already. I mean, you know, essentially we've got three points to prove. We need to prove that there's work going on for money there, payment. We need to prove that they are gaining from it. And we need to prove that they are controlling and moving the girls. And, and if we prove those three points in relation to one person, then, then we're there. That's the actual uh, target premises there, I think. See another man going in there. You just, you just wonder how busy is it? How, how regular are people going in there? And um, what money are they making? How could you ever guarantee someone's safety working in a brothel? You can't. So what threats are they under to comply? That's my big issue. It, it, they're the most important people in this for me, is the, the women that are in there being uh, trafficked. That's, um, that's the most important thing.
the head of the OCG, Mark Viner, Subject Oak, is returning to the UK tomorrow, arriving at London Heathrow from Brazil. It's our intention to surveil him, see what he does, see who he meets with, see where he goes. It's the first day of the operation. You could say there's a higher risk of compromise, just purely because you don't know the subject. And so we've got to be on the top of our game. Today's activity centres around Mark Vino, who is seemingly the head. There he is. He'll be known as Subject Oak. He travelled to Heathrow Airport last week, where he took a flight to Brazil, uh, it's a place where he's previously been. Um, a lot of the girls who work for him on Adult Works are Brazilian. And he is flying in to Terminal 5 this afternoon, uh, just after 12 o'clock. He's only spent a week in Brazil, so this is probably not a holiday and most likely business. We need to see where he goes, who he's with, and what he's doing. Any questions? No. Sure. Is the team sheet coming up? Boys, we're going to get it. Nothing heard. 4 4, comms check. 4 4, you're landing clear for 4 4, 5 2, Four four two four zero. Are you in a position? <laughs> yes, yes. Any confirmation of um, arrival time? If you maintain a visual. Transport train is very busy on his phone. Which is a black BMW X5. So that's white, 
Offside lane, speed eight zero. Near side indication, centre lane, speed five zero. on the roundabout. Not one, not one. Not two, not two. Identification at Oak. Out, out, out the vehicle. Foot unit to uh, cover the visual of the vehicle. Yeah, further foot operative to deploy to um, maintain close control. Uh, 4 4 William, subject utilizes FaceTime upon the smartphone. female with dark hair, South American appearance. He's sent a lot of text messages um, and booked a flight on his phone. Relaying Oak is joined in the Cobra bar by a female, mid-30s, black puffer jacket, jeans, maybe Brazilian. Seem to count out cash on the, onto the table. 4 4 John, just confirm uh, how many pints? Two. Yes, yes, loud and clear. Hi, Pete, how are you doing? Yes, yeah, not too bad. I gather he's, he's on his third point. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely parked in the multi-storey car park, so the inference is he's going to go back to his car. It's a matter for you if you think that we should intervene with traffic or to let him run home. Hmm. Uh, well, my my gut feeling is we should we should try and get him pulled by my car. I've got to make a decision. Do we let him drive with that amount of alcohol in him? If he crashes, if he hurts somebody, what's our responsibility? But also. If he is over the limit, it's an opportunity to get close to him, get really close to him, get into a conversation with him. So we're going to get a traffic car to just do a routine stop check. 
breathalyze him and we'll see what happens. Four three has the eyeball. Subject O can the safety of FEMA walk towards the subject vehicle. O is in and in to the driver's seat and the female enters the front passenger seat. Just for the information of the team, the intervention teams that are in a position to stop the subject vehicle on departure. Subject vehicle is a stop, stop, stop on the near side as a result of intervention from a marked unit. An officer engages with uh, the subject, Oak. Yeah, it's female as well. Hello, how are you doing? Cool on, my sister. Four four has the visual. There's no change, no change. Are you located there? Yeah. 4-4, four, four, in the event the subject Oak is arrested or detained, the team will remain on the associate. OK, sorry me, jump. We shan't keep you too long, all right? We're just, uh, just to make a few inquiries with... Is it...? No, it wasn't even my friend. Your friend? Yeah. We're just making a few inquiries with your friend, all right? Nothing to worry about. Okay. Just doing a quick breath test on him. Oh, all right, okay. he won't be with you too long, OK? Where are you from then? Over Brazil. Brazil? Yeah. Ah. Boy. OK, I want you to provide me a specimen of breath, a breath specimen of powder, crying to the fish, the air crack, air 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 I'll hold the machine, nice deep breath, just breathe on a tube to the tape to stop. Stop, hold on. Twenty-four. Okay, so it's past. Thirty five is the legal limit. That's it's like two you. points, that's it's isn't it? Okay, cool. All right. How long ago was the two points? It must be thirty minutes ago. Just be careful you're not going up still though. If you were stopped in another 10 minutes, you might be over the limit. That's what we say, it's probably best not to drive, but... I mean, you say you live, you live around the corner, anyway, don't you? About 200 yards, yeah. so it's better to park the car. Yeah, I, I would do, so don't take the risk. Something is out, 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 it's in and in to the subject vehicle. He's passed. Brazil, Brazil, yeah. Ah. I didn't think it was a local accent. I didn't think it was a local accent. This woman does match an identity that we were given in the intelligence, so... <laughs> Uh, we've been able to do some work on that and we can see that, that she was a sex worker and at some point she's now seeming to be involved in the business. If you look at the footage, that's certainly consistent with what we'd call a, an, an alpha female. Stand by, stand by, stand by. The subject is out, out, out of the subject vehicle. Just up down, just up down. When you've got women who can't speak English, the traffickers they can't communicate, so they need somebody to go between, somebody to, to make it happen. And what they'll often do is, is use women who have previously been exploited. How do you treat them? Are they a victim? Are they a suspect? I generally take the position that the real villains are the male traffickers that are making the sexual exploitation happen. Four-four relay and lights are illuminated uh, within the penthouse apartment of the Millennium Plaza. The curtains have been drawn to one of the bedrooms that overlooks the main road. Four-four to the team then, so stand down, stand down, stand down. We've seen him actually have a FaceTime conversation with someone that we think is in Brazil, and also it looks like he's been booking uh, air travel now. I don't know at the moment whether that's to or from Brazil but uh, we think he's had a conversation with someone he is either bringing in or someone who is bringing someone else in. So 
the questions for us at the moment are who is that that he was speaking to and who is that ticket for? The stereotype of the Brazilian woman is like uh, big ass, big boobs. She loves and likes to somebody. So maybe she will like football as well and beers and party and they are sexy. They are just the best women in the world. Like they create this Brazilian woman, this amazing woman. We're running an operation at the moment about a Brazilian worker trafficking network mm -hmm. based um, right in the heart of Cheltenham. We're still trying to establish exactly how it operates. And we were interested just because you'd had a, a successful prosecution recently and we thought oh, that would be really interesting to hear some of the things you did and how you approached it. My job focused on, for want of a better word, two pimps um, and three sex workers. Um, the three sex workers were all Brazilian. One of the controllers, one of the pimps was a Brazilian female um, who was the link to the Brazilian sex workers. Um, Do you she, know how these girls got here? All of them arrived on tourist visas, um, so they don't have right to work here, they don't have work permits. One of the girls met a, a pimp in the UK online. The pimp said, get a punter to get you a plane ticket to the UK, which she did. She met the pimp's driver at the airport that drove her to a brothel in Maidenhead, and she was worked in about three or four brothels in Maidenhead, um, where text messages or WhatsApp messages she sends at the time, she actually says, I'm being worked like a slave. I was working for like two months without any day off, like any day off, from 11 till 3 a.m. Weekends like 5 a.m. Can you imagine like? I mean, there is just a lot of customers, and you hurt because of course if you have 10 customers in a day, you will be hurt, and it happens, you know, almost all the time. I'm gonna have to guess they're charging about 30 quid half hour, something like that. 120 pounds for an hour and 300 pounds an hour for an out appointment. So if you're if they're expected to go to a hotel or to their home address, and then different sexual favours, anal's usually another 70 pounds, um, and different sexual favours are more. There are different ways of pimping. So. The 50% houses where, say, it's 60 quid for half an hour, then it's a 30 30 split. Um, there is this other telephonist approach where they'll take £10 for arranging it, just picking up the phone and saying, go to this address. Um, I've also seen the approach where you pay for the room and then it doesn't matter how many clients you do, um, but you would have to probably do two or three clients to just to be able to pay for the room each day. Um, so if you didn't have any clients that day, you were out of, out of pocket. I used to work in these houses, like, they pay, like, £20 to have sex with someone, you know, for 15 minutes. It's, it's crazy, it's unbelievable. And I did this before, when I first came to England, you know. You will suffer for the money. In London, when I started to work, I heard from, from many, many girls that they were in houses, these guys just came and robbed them. I heard that they had knives, they were like five, six guys. They, they do this because they know we will not call the police, because they know we work in brothels, which is not legal. One time I was in Oxford working and some random guy called me he just paid for 15 minutes and he just took the condom off and she, me, he leaved and he was sending me texts like, oh, I have HIV. He was just saying horrible things to me in the texts. I just called the social care and she booked me to go in the hospital. 28 days, 
taking drugs to not have any disease. And every time I, I was taking this, it makes me feel really sad. Because I was, I wanted to forget, but I couldn't. Do you know who's setting up the adult work accounts? We've identified one that was set up by another one of our subjects, Leslie Davis, and intel suggests that he is the guy setting up and maintaining them. People's phones can tell you a lot about them. Um, obtained call data records on Leslie Davis's phone, and what that showed was that he was in frequent contact with workers. Another tool I use is NPR data. There's this number of cameras that are situated on roads throughout the UK. As a vehicle passes these cameras, the vehicle registration will be recorded. Then we can search and see which cameras it's passed. So in the instance of Leslie Davis, we ran his vehicle through the NPR systems. So this is his Jaguar registration C5 SXY, C5 Birmingham 4 one has the Oval, Western Avenue, the A40 towards London Centre Lane, speed 2-0, no vehicle cover. There is a pattern to his activity where he is frequently travelling to London um, at least once but sometimes two or three times a week, setting off early in the morning, spending his time around sort of the Kensington Mayfair area of London at which point he will be in contact with workers and then returning back to Cheltenham in the evening. Stand by, stand by, stand by. Subject is out and out of the vehicle and stand at the time of sight. I've looked at Mr Davis's account, which is a first reserve account. Interestingly enough, I have found a large number of female names, and I will go through them. The subject has entered flat number six, where he has met with a female. This female he appeared to know well, and they talked about payment. We've got Serena, Isabella, Nicole, Daniela, Bettina, Miriam, and I've done a little snapshot here of how often the money's going in and out of these accounts. We've got August 2017, we've got on one day, uh, Serena, Isabella and Nicole paying 300 quid in uh, and 50 quid in, respectively. Uh, 21st of August, you've got Danila paying um, 150 in, Maria Bueno paying 300 in. So that's just a very quick snapshot for you. Relay and held outside of number 36. Birch presses the buzzer at this address. Stand by, stand by, stand by. Positive identification of subject, Birch, in company with a further blonde female. They cross over the road in a down street. This is towards the uh, main road in the letterbox. So what adult work say yeah. is any user wishing to create an advert on adult work that we suspect is not British is requested to provide a current photograph of themselves 
holding a document to prove the date that the picture was taken and standing at a location that can be verified, such as a post box or a phone box. So if we look at Davis's bank accounts, how many of these does he get through? I would say it's probably somewhere between 50 to 100 that he's probably mm. running out of time. Um, obviously, we know he's been doing it years, so he's probably yeah. got quite a high turnover. We know he's, he's travelling to London, but he's also maintaining these accounts further afield, isn't he? Because we've seen payments really quite far yeah. north. The thing is, I think they come in and they, they either come and register in Cheltenham with it, yeah. or they register in London but then they go and work all over the place That's and right. they right. can't actually work without him doing that. This is a junction with Wallam Grove and Manston Place. Four six, are you deployed? Or two permission. Four two permission. 4-2, go ahead. 4-2, the two Brazilian ladies in the company of Birch with a copy of today's newspaper. If we look at the Brazilian profiles on adult works, yeah. I think when I did a search, I was something like seven or 800, just Brazilian in the UK at any one time. Yeah, I'm surprised it's... And a lot of that will be down to him, because he's got that Brazilian connection. Yeah. My dream, it's like, just go somewhere totally different and there you will work and you have lots of money and you can live a life perfect and you can do things you, you never could do before. Just leave this place and have a better life. dependence with this money and it's really hard to get out because it seems that you don't know how to do anything else. My mom was like, you don't need to go, we can stay here, but she couldn't help. It just seemed so hard, you know. Trafficking is about criminals looking for people who are vulnerable and then looking to move them somewhere by telling them that, that life is going to be better if you come with us. That vulnerability they're looking for, it, it can take many forms. It can be that conditions are so appalling for that person where they are for example, if they're doing sex work on a street in Brazil, that actually they are happy to come and do sex work in a relatively controlled environment in the UK. That doesn't mean they're not exploited, and it doesn't mean that bad things aren't going to happen to them here. Will that be enough? 120, 150 um, per hour. Um, well, they do do half hours, 70, half an hour. So we can go half hour and say 70. So we've got all this information telling us yeah. that we think work is going on in there, but we need evidence.
So the best way is, is to actually get in there and, and be offered sex in there, and then we can prove that he's running a brothel. So they're going to do two deployments this week, sending somebody in uh, to try and try and evidence that sex has been offered full payment uh, by the women that are advertising um, in Cheltenham, and that we've got linked to these nominals. So, so really, this is just about proving the the sexual element, but also then trying to trying to get some intelligence about how this whole operation works. my way now to meet the the covert operative i don't even know the true identity of the person um who's actually going to be going and getting me this intelligence um because i don't need to know i mean at the end of the day the people involved in this work are risking their lives in the sense that if they were caught doing what they're doing you know that there are people out there um who would do them serious harm Okay, how, how have we got on then? There are three females at the address. All of whom appear to be of Brazilian origin. Uh, one of the females we've spoken to, she's 26 years of age and offers various sexual services. Uh, condoms were seen, vibrators were seen, and sexual conversation. Oh, yeah. She said that once the rent is met, she then keeps everything above that. Yeah, there's no change, no change at the uh, front of the premises. Full four to the team. Then we have a radio silence um, without uh, interruption. That should clear the uh, alarm. I'm just going to give you a few a few headlines from the deployment. Intelligence suggests that that is uh, Gabrielle Brazil who, who is advertising on, on Adult Works. She charges £100 half an hour, £150 for an hour. We'll do anything sexually. Yeah. Hi, it's Pete. How do we get on then? Okay. And she's actually saying traffic, is she? Or yeah, but what she's describing is trafficking then. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Very interesting. The whole operation is as the intelligence says, isn't it? in terms of Viner goes abroad, sources the girls from Brazil, brings them back, they engage in sex work in those flats, and Davis does all the profiles. These people who are bringing women in, they're almost like a gateway, but that gateway is into a very dark place. So when we arrest Viner, we want to charge him because he's a flight risk. He will leave the country. If we arrested him and released him under investigation or on bail, he's got such strong links in Brazil that I've got no doubt he'd be on his toes and we would never see him again. So there's still some work to do. We've got a lot of intelligence. We need to make that into evidence. But I've got a feeling this is bigger than just Viner. I think there's a whole network behind this. 
because I've not come across a trafficker who's not also been involved in some other crime. That was some sort of sale of workers. I think he's going to find a girl, to be honest, mate. Hi, Mark. These girls are being trafficked around the country. Please, please. There's always potential that someone senses they're being watched. It is committed, committed. Sign close to the tunnel. Yeah, 4 4 to team, then let him run, let him run. Lo que nos preocupa de él es que pueda establecerse aquí. Personally, I think Viner's gone for good. I think the only way we're going to see him back in the UK is in handcuffs.